next morning, when Minnie Mart came down to his empty store, he was surprised to find people stocking it up. He said he didn't order anything, but the workers said they were all paid for. When asked who it was, they said it was Quan Cheong Rim. Minnie Mart thought Quan might have sent them because he wouldn't be able to pay back without it, or maybe he was trying to stop him from selling his organs or body. Whatever, what mattered most was that Quan was lavishing him with attention. Minnie Mart signed the papers and saw the hefty payment. He wondered what he should write in his notebook. Maybe that things were finally going his way. Just then, the worker handed him another parcel and said it was from Quan, too. Minnie Mart opened it and was shocked to find a phone inside. Quan had left a note saying, Now you owe me more. He was thrilled. Quan's handwriting was elegant, and Minnie Mart was likely the only one with his business card and number. Just then, Quan called and told him to save his number. He ordered to call him every hour whether he picked up or not. Otherwise, he'll be punished. Minnie Mart agreed and thanked him for the packages. Quan told him to thank him by obeying him. Minnie Mart happily organized the store after writing about how special he was to Quan. Minnie Mart was counting seconds to call Quan. He was looking forward to hearing his voice. Thunder clapped, and Minnie Mart worried he left the windows open at home. With no customers, he went home and closed the windows. His parents hadn't touched the food again. There was time, so he quickly showered before returning to the store. A resident told him to hurry, because Quan was waiting. Seeing him, Quan asked for a lighter, and Minnie Mart hurried to it. When he turned, Quan slapped him to the ground. He was pissed that Minnie Mart betrayed his trust. He was so obedient, but then he didn't call him today or pick up. Minnie Mart quickly explained that he had to make food for his parents. Quan said that was natural, but now he was on his time. He thought he ran away from debt. Minnie Mart insisted he would never do that. He explained that the clock in his house was broken, so he miscalculated time. But Quan remained unmoved, instructing Minnie Mart to keep his phone on him at all times. Or was it that he really wanted to sell his kidney or himself? Why couldn't he follow simple instructions? Quan asked if he was done with him, now that he screwed him. He warned him to behave, because he hated those who defied him, no matter who. He then softened up and said, hitting him doesn't just hurt him, it hurts Quan too. Minnie Mart was relieved when he was forgiven this once, and then heard something that shook him. I care about you, Minnie Mart. He couldn't have been happier. Those words lingered in his mind all day. When he got home, he told his parents he didn't want to deliver drug anymore, as he got accused of theft. But then, Quan took care of it. He told them Quan was the little brother of the twins. He bought him a phone and paid to restock the store. Maybe he was worried about him. He felt giddy, recalling Quan said he cares about him.